Hi everyone, welcome back to the Brambleberry YouTube channel. I'm London and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to add color to your soy wax candles. If you've never made a soy wax candle, go back and watch our soy basics video and then come join us so we can show you how to add colorant to your candle. All right, let's jump right in. So let's start with my favorite coloring option, this is gonna be the soy dye flakes. Now these were the easiest to use and the most reliable. So I'm gonna jump right in and talk a little bit about these. If you haven't worked with soy dye flakes, these are really user friendly. They come in a really small size, so they're easy to melt down, unlike a block which can add a little extra stirring and time. And you have to worry about things like bubbles and frosting from all of that stirring just to get it to dissolve. So I love these soy flakes. Um, you can find all kinds of colors on Brambleberry com melon orange cobalt blue this is the blush pink and um, adding these into your soy wax you can do that right at the beginning when you're heating it up on your double boiler or you can add it in after you've measured or weighed out your wax so i've weighed out some soy wax and you want to make sure that you're adding the dye flakes to it when it's pretty hot Definitely before you add any fragrance, so usually around 185 degrees Fahrenheit is a good temperature to add your soy flakes. Now, a little goes a long way. This is a pretty vibrant color. This is the cobalt blue, and using about a quarter of a teaspoon per pound of soy wax is gonna give you what I would say is a medium shade, so kind of like this. If you want a slightly darker shade, you can use up to a half a teaspoon per pound of wax. If you get too much wax in there, it might be a little bit different in consistency, so just play around with it so you can get the color that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and just break some of these up with my fingers, just to make it a little bit easier. Since the size of the flakes vary, it's nice to just get it at a more manageable consistency. You could also chop it up with a knife, whatever works for you. I just like to do it the quick way. So once I've broken these up, they're gonna be a little easier to melt. I'm not doing quite a full pound of wax, so I'm not gonna use a full quarter teaspoon. I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball it. All right, so now I'm just gonna gently stir Oh, look at how dark that is already. So you'll see it's melting really quickly. And it's a good time to sort of test the color of the wax before you add your fragrance. What you see is kind of what you get, but if we're thinking a medium shade looks kind of like this, this looks substantially darker when it's in its translucent stage. As it starts to cool and become more opaque, it's gonna lighten up quite a bit. So I would definitely test your color before you add your fragrance, just in case you need to pop it back on the double boiler. So let's go ahead and do that. A good way to test the color of your wax is just to take a little bit of parchment paper or a baking sheet and dip it into the wax and then let it cool. So I'm just gonna set that down. You could also drip some onto a piece of paper, that works as well. But what you'll notice as the wax starts to cool is the more true color. And that way, if you wanna go back and add some more, you can. If you feel like your color is too dark, you can also dilute it with more wax as well. So now that our color is all mixed into our wax, we're gonna go ahead and pour it. You wanna pour it nice and slow, just like you do with all of the rest of the soy tutorials that we've talked about. And now we'll let it cool. Okay, so one of the things that I noticed with adding different colorants to your candle is it may um, be more prone to frosting. Now, if you remember, frosting looks kind of like that snowflake or crystallization on the surface of the wax. All natural waxes like soy and coconut are really prone to frosting anyway, and it's purely aesthetic. So it's not gonna change the function of your candle or impact the smell, but you may notice that it is a little more finicky. Now you'll see on this one, the blue was a little more prone to frosting and then the red down at the bottom. Um, I didn't see a huge difference in pouring temperature. I poured all the way from 140 all the way up to 160. And while I do think that pouring out a little bit of a higher temperature can help reduce the frosting, I wouldn't say that it totally eliminates it. So you may just have to find the right pouring temperature that works best for you. These I use the Nature C3 wax and you can pour out a little bit hotter of a temperature with that wax as well. So if you see some frosting on the surface of your candle, it's totally fine and it's not gonna hurt anything. 
Another thing to note when using dyes is that they are UV light sensitive. So when you're using a lot of colorants in your candles, make sure that you're working away from direct sunlight and that you're not keeping them in bright continuous light while they're cooling or curing or just being stored. Um, you may notice some change in color over time and that's perfectly normal. You can add other extra additives like UV inhibitors and that may help um, just stabilize the color and make it last a little longer. The other thing that can change the color of your wax is your fragrance. So just like with soap making, some fragrances are a little bit more prone to discoloration and that may change the color of your candle. So before you do a really big batch, just make sure you test those ingredients together and make sure it's not gonna alter the color before, uh, before you make 10 or 20. So now that you know the proper way to color your candles, let's talk about some of the things not to do. There's some obvious household items that you might be thinking about when trying to choose what to color your candles with. Probably the most common one are gonna be something like these uh, food coloring that you have in your drawer. These work really well for tinting your favorite desserts, but they don't work so well for coloring a candle. Some of the ingredients are things like glycerin and propylene glycol, which tend to attract water, so they're not gonna mix and bond with the wax the way that you want. Should also be noted that some of the ingredients that are safe for other applications are not safe when you're putting it next to an open flame. So let's show you what happens when you add food coloring to your soy wax. Take this little purple color on the end and just squeeze in a couple of drops. And what's happening is already it's beating up and sinking to the bottom. And the more I stir, the more it just continues to separate. So even after a few quick turns, you're gonna see that there's just no way to get this to incorporate into your wax, and you're just gonna end up wasting all of that wax. Another household option is one that you probably easily think of, such as this little crayon. Um, most of us have crayons rolling around in our junk drawer or in our art stash, and it seems like a really logical choice to use in coloring our candle. They come in a wide variety of colors, they're really inexpensive, and they're made of wax, right? So it seems like a match made in heaven. That being said, crayons are made primarily of pigment. Each color is gonna vary in the amount of pigment that it takes to get to that color, and pigments have a very large particle size. So when you're thinking about adding a crayon to your wax as an option for coloring your candle, it might be something that actually inhibits the burn of that candle. So this is an example of a candle that I made using a crayon as the colorant, and I just wanna kinda of show you and walk you through what happens when you use that. So I've chopped up a little bit of this blue crayon, probably a quarter to a half of a gram. Most crayons are about three grams, if that's helpful. So I just chopped it up really finely so I can add it to the wax. Now, unlike our dye flakes, which we used earlier and were actually about the same color, you'll notice that they're not gonna dissolve quite as quickly. It is melting, as we said earlier, Crayons are made with wax, usually paraffin. So it is gonna melt, but it may not fully incorporate. Okay, I'm gonna pour this. This is a pretty dark color. The more that you add, of course, the harder it is going to be for that candle to burn. And the color is really beautiful, but you can see lots of little chunks and streaks in there, which tells me that it's probably not going to evenly distribute throughout. Now we've got some little chunks left over in there too. So we'll let this cool and then we'll talk about what it looks like when it actually burns. So this is a candle that I made using the crayon as the colorant and you can see that flame is having a really hard time. And the reason for that is just that all of that pigment that's in the Crayola crayon is not being able to be drawn up the wick and that's how your candle burns. The heat from the flame melts all of the wax and then everything is drawn up the wick. So as it's trying to consume more and more, it can't do that because it's not able to get a big healthy flame. It's probably gonna put itself out here pretty quick and you can see that ring around the top that looks kind of like almost like cauliflower. It's got like a really bumpy, bubbly top. That's from the very first burn and it didn't even create a full wax melt pool. It actually burned itself out within about 30 minutes. So 
This is not overall a great option for coloring your candles and this is the main reason why. The color itself actually isn't too bad. It looks pretty even. If you flip it over on the bottom, there's a lot of like specks and like chunks of um, crayon that didn't quite melt and incorporate. But overall, just aesthetically, it seems like it should work. Now, if you have a lot of crayons laying around and you just want a quick and easy quarantine project for your kids, you could do something like a wax melt using crayons where it doesn't have the wick. That's really the biggest reason why this is not a good use of your time. If you're planning on selling any candles, definitely don't use this as your colorant option. It's not gonna perform very well and it's gonna be really, really disappointing. Okay, so let's talk about some of the other coloring options that you have. Um, one of those is going to be an oxide or a pigment powder and then mica, which if you're a soaper, you probably already use in your soaping. Now, these two powders are really beautiful in color, but you can see particle size, especially in this ultramarine pink pigment, is really gonna vary. So this is gonna be something that can potentially clog your wick as well. And mica, while it's really fine and seems like it should work, is also gonna be a potential problem when burning in your candle. Now, you'll see in the trial of our um, mica candle that color-wise, looks really nice. Um, you look like you've got a pretty even color, but when you flip it over to the bottom, it actually mostly sank down to the bottom there. Burn overall was okay. It didn't fully blow itself out or extinguish, if you will, but it did have a really difficult time burning and it didn't quite reach a full melt pool in the time that it should. It also looked really inconsistent and the inside there, you'll notice there's a lot of um, mica pockets that are sitting on the surface of the wax as well. The ultramarine pink, again, pretty color. Um, you can see it's a lot lighter in shade than the powder itself. And again, flip it over on the bottom and you'll see lots of little speckles where most of that ultramarine powder just really sank to the bottom. This one did have a very difficult time burning. It self-extinguished in less than a half an hour, so it didn't reach a full melt pool and the flame just couldn't get very big. So it couldn't create enough heat to continue to melt and consume that wax. So I would say both of these options are not the best in terms of coloring your candle. That being said, I think that there are some ways that you can make the mica work. One of those would be if you're making something like a wax melt or tart where there's no wick and you don't have to worry about it clogging the wick because it's not being drawn up anything. That's a really beautiful application for mica and you'll really get the benefit of that nice metallic sparkle in there. So that's a great option. Another option is using just a tiny layer on the very top of your candle. So let's see what that would look like. So one way to incorporate some of the mica in your candle would be to take just a little bit and brush it lightly with your finger on the top surface of the candle. This is a really sparing amount. It's just gonna give you a little bit of sparkle and shine without being so much that it inhibits the ability to burn. You can also do this technique with glitter. That works great. Just adding a little bit of glitter at the very end on top of your candle. Um, it works best to do it that way instead of trying to add it when you're pouring your candle. That way it doesn't sink to the bottom and it just sits nice and a level on top. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about what kinds of materials you can use to color your candle, but we haven't really talked about technique in using color in your candles. Obviously, you can do a solid color candle and that's perfect and beautiful. There's also some other really fun techniques such as layering, like these two here. Got kind of a watermelon vibe with this one with the green at the bottom, uh, transitioning to the pink. You can do a rainbow candle, which is very cool. Um, I'm gonna show you how to layer similar to this watermelon one as well. I've already poured two layers in there. And when you're layering, the most important thing is to be patient and go slow. You don't wanna pour the wax too hot or else it can blend or start to bleed in with another color, especially when you've got a really pale color going up against a really dark color. You've got a lot of contrast there. This is actually sat overnight, so I know that it's fully opaque and cooled, but if you were pouring everything in the same day, you wanna make sure that the surface of the wax looks like it's perfectly cooled, it's entirely opaque, and the glass itself isn't 
isn't still hot. So if everything else looks good, it looks like your candle's cooled, you can go ahead and pour your next layer. Um, for the rainbow candle, I actually measured the wax out for each layer just to keep it really consistent. I did about, I think an ounce and a half, and that way I knew that each layer would be the same. For this one, I just totally eyeballed it, which is what I'm gonna do with this one. So I'm gonna add some of this cobalt blue wax and it's pretty cool. I would say about 135 is probably a great temperature to pour at. You can pour slightly hotter or slightly cooler, but I would say that's a good starting point. This feels very Washington. And now I'm just gonna let this cool completely. Because when you're layering your candles, you're changing the temperature of the glass again and again, it's cooling down, it's heating up, it's cooling down, it's heating up. You may see some difference in the way that the layers stick to or adhere to the glass, if you will. So some of them might pull away. Again, just like with frosting we talked about earlier, this is a purely aesthetic issue and it's not gonna hurt anything. I just, I love seeing all of the color options that you can do in a candle. So I'm not even bothered when something like that happens. So we'll let this guy cool and then we'll take a look when it's done. Another technique that you can try is kind of a swirl or maybe a tie-dye kind of look. And this isn't gonna be an exact science like the layering where you can really measure and make sure you get exact proportions and know exactly what the outcome's gonna look like. This may be a little more varied, I think that's really fun because you don't know exactly what it's gonna turn out like, just like when you tie-dye a t-shirt, right? So this is one that I made with two different colors, the powder blue and the white. And this swirling, if you will, is similar to how you would create those layers and swirls and soap sort of pouring back and forth. So you're getting a really varied effect. Same thing with the purple here. I did purple and white, just easy contrast. Um, this is a method where you're gonna have to work very quickly and you'll wanna make sure that your wax is at a really low temperature. So let's take a look at one of the ways that you could kind of create this swirl or cloudy sky look, if you will. You wanna make sure that your wax is at a very low temperature, almost as it's starting to get what we call kind of slushy or um, it's thickening and starting to cool down. So a lot of those crystal formations are already forming. This is gonna ensure that it's not too hot and it can sort of layer together. Now there's no perfect science or technique here. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of each in at a time. And you don't have to do it in any specific quantity or proportion. I can see that this blue is a little cooler, which may actually work in our favor. Now, one thing to do is you could pause after you've poured a couple, you know, batches in and let it cool a little bit before you start layering again. It's likely to get a little more muddy or a little cloudier if you continue pouring all the way to the top. So go slow. If you look at this one, I can see that there's a lot of blue and it's sitting a little heavier towards the bottom. You'll have to work kind of fast. If you've ever swirled, maybe melt and pour, or you've done kind of an in the pot uh, swirl with soap making, this is fairly similar and you'll actually probably be a little, little uh, better at it than I am. But I think that there's a lot of really cool techniques that you can do. Um, this is just two colors, but you could go really crazy if you want and do multiple. So as I was testing out this technique, which truth be told, I had never done before, so it was all just a really um, cool learning experience. There are some things that didn't quite work that logically I thought would. One of those was pouring just, let's say, white or a solid color of wax in, and then while the wax was still hot, piping in some other colors or other dyed wax while the wax was really, really warm. In the photos, as I was doing it, it looked like it was gonna be amazing and it was this beautiful swirl. And then as it cooled, it was like the swirl was all on the inside. So you really didn't get that effect around the outside on the glass, which is probably the part that matters. The other technique that I tried that also didn't work as well as I had hoped was to just kind of like pipe or swirl some of the colored wax around the 
inside just along the glass and then let that cool and pour my white or contrasting color wax in after that. I tried doing that technique at a couple of different pouring temperatures. I tried a really low temperature, like 140. I tried a really hot temperature, like 160, and both did not give a really great result. Definitely not as nice as these two where just slowly, patiently kind of layering them back and forth seemed to give you a better sense of blending and it didn't um, didn't cause a lot of like clumps or just weird bulgy layers. Cool. Well, I hope this video helped you know what colorants to try and some different techniques on how to layer and swirl. Um, show us your projects. Tag us in your projects. We want to see what you guys make. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up if you like the video and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone.